Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, bring you greetings from the Mizpah Church. Pastor Willis here. I want to welcome everyone to the memorial ceremony of Brother Larry Bailey. And we want to remember the family in prayer. Just want to read before we have our opening prayer. 1 Corinthians 2 says, I have not seen nor ear heard. We look forward to that great day when we will not have any more memorial ceremonies or any more funerals. Somebody say amen. amen. At this time, we will have our opening prayer by Elder Smith, and then a hymn, a reading of scripture, and then a special music. Can we all bow our heads for a Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne, seeking your guidance and helping us to understand the situation that we're going through. Lord, death is indeed an enemy, but we know there's coming a time when there'll be no more sadness, no more tears. We pray that you bless the family as we go through the memorial service of Brother Larry Bailey. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to invite you all to join with me as we sing a hymn uh, found, if you have your hymn books in front of you, hymn 633, When We All Get to Heaven, When We All Get to Heaven. When you find it, well, let's stand and uh, sing in honor for the Bailey standing as we sing this song. Uh, when We All Get to Heaven, 633 in your hymn books. We'll sing the first and last stanzas.
and second wife, Diane Patterson. Larry was preceded in death by his parents, siblings Craig and Sharon, wife Yanetta Bailey, one grandchild, and one great grandchild.
so we had got a ride to uh, an area that we was going to uh, show the kids dealing with the historical sites. And um, when we got there, he said, we're walking back. I said, <laughs> Not me, brother. So he said, the, the van is gone. I told him to leave. I said, you sure? We looked down the road, and the van was going down the road. Barry said, we're walking back. He said, if you watch and see the van, we're going to meet the van. And so when we started across country, the van had to go zigzagging around the roads. And we went across country. And that made it shorter. And I was so happy I didn't know what to do. But they had just got out, the, uh, the drivers had just got out the, the van when we uh, reached the, uh, the uh, campsite. And we came up behind the picnic tables. And they were so shocked, they didn't know what to do. And I was too. <laughs> but Bailey had a way of doing things. Uh, believe it or not, he was a man that was really knowledgeable about nature. He was a naturalist, believe it or not. And he knew his trees. He can tell you by just looking at the bark on the tree, what the tree name was. And I'm still looking at the leaves. <laughs> but he was real known for the bushes and the different things that the Lord had given us on this earth. But there's a verse in the Bible where I had to come up with something that kind of stood away for all of you who are here. I don't see any young people for say, I know we are young in heart, but I mean young, young people, you know. And it's in Joshua 4, verse 20, and it says, And Joshua set up at Gilead the twelve stones that had taken, they had taken out of the Jordan River. He said to the Israelites, in the future when you, when your descendants ask that, ask their fathers, what does these stones mean? Tell them that the Israelite passed through the Jordan River on dry land. Everything we do seems to be real physical, but we need to start thinking on a spiritual level about what we do. So many things is out of whack right now. Even those things that we don't see that are behind the scene, we don't know what's happening right now. But there is some commotions in the White House. I don't mean because Trump is there. I mean there are some things that are going to be upset, very upset. And we need to understand that we need to teach our kids about what used to be and what used to happen in our churches. You see, we're pulling away from what we believe because so many things are pulling at us. We're here for a reason, and that reason is to go on God's error. And it deals with the three angels' message. We need to go on God's error. Brother Bailey didn't have a chance to come to the last camp of read. But I do have a patch here from the last camp of read that was this year in September. The name of the theme for that this year was anointed. He was a very anointed guy. He always found a way to get where he needed to go. He didn't care if he had to walk or what. 
ilustera. I mean, he was there. <clears throat> this is very spiritual because you know what? That was a time we didn't have cars and buses. Might have had a horse someplace, but you, you only got that because you were found real in. On two feet. The last time I saw him was in, on the campground when I had resigned my post. And believe it or not, he came. And I know who his driver was. And he's sitting right here today. Elder Smith. You know, we gotta find a way to make things happen for our young people. <laughs> You have to excuse me, you know. I'm very emotional. Anyway, I give this patch to be. Amen. You need to do that. I'm a plumber. And believe it or not, one of the things that some people don't realize, it's a little device they call a relief valve on the side of your hot water tank. If the control stops working like it should, the hot water will get too hot. That little control will open up and relieve the pressure. There's some things we need to release. And just let them go. That's all. Amen. Amen. Our young people are pressured. Not by the church, this building, but by the church, the people. Pray for them. When this habit comes tomorrow, this evening rather, Check out and see how many young people are here. Then ask yourself, what can I do to make sure that they're here? They need your help. <coughs> they can say anything they want to, but they need your help. I just like to say a little small prayer pass. Father, in your hands. We commit ourselves. We knew us, Father, as we partake of the communion service, Father. We knew us. And let us make it right the next time. We need you and only you to show us and to send your Holy Spirit so that we can energize young people. That's what he was all about. We ask that you allow us to see him when he wake up in the morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I didn't know him as a person who led him like my dad did. I knew him as a leader. And so he was like a second dad to me because my dad hung out with him. And so as a seven-year-old, he would take me in the woods and he would help me find snakes <laughs> and at our campground, we used to have something called a salamander back then. I don't know if you remember that. And so the little salamanders, they would, they would run. They're like little small lizards, and they're black. And they would run through the woods. And so he would teach us how to triangulate, how to catch them. So we'd have some people stand on this side and make noise. And then when we make noise, 
they would run to the other side and then they would have to reveal themselves. Well, it didn't mean that we would catch them, but at least we would see them. And so he had this brilliant plan all the time. And so these were the type of men that my dad worked with. And so it gave me something to look up to. And so for me today, I'm here to pay tribute to him. Not because he worked with my dad, but because he was a mentor to me. I am one of his protégés. And so personally, some of the things that he taught me, I have gone on to incorporate into my life. What I have seen with men who are anointed, their children are anointed also. And so what happens is, Satan, just like the leaders of those who are anointed, he comes after the children of those who are anointed. And so for me, I'm actually not here for him alone. I'm here to support Giba. Because I know how hard it could be. If you lose your dad, can't even imagine it. But this is what I can imagine. I can imagine that Satan wants us to be off the path of what we were created for. I'm supposed to be in New York right now giving a speech. It's an honor to be here to represent this family and the hard work and volunteership that they've given to countless amount of pastors. <coughs> and the training and learning that they've given to countless amount of youth my age. And I can only say, out of the five guys, Brother Bailey, Brother Bill, Brother Abernathy, the Uncle Bob, and my dad, that I can be half of the leader that in you. But this is what's called an adventurer pen. Adventurers are the pathfinders. They're like the pathfinders before they did pathfinders. They're like the stream, that, the contributory that becomes the river, that becomes the ocean. And so if they, these guys are pathfinders, then we would be considered adventurers in our leadership mode because we still have a long way to go. And so I would like to pin this on you. Amen. Because I want you to know that God has a special anointing and a calling on your life. And although people don't approve of the path that we take to get to the anointing and the calling, it is still your anointing and it is still your calling. And I commission you today at this memorial service in honor of your dad to make sure that your calling is an election sure. And that your commission is completed, the one that you know that I gave you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. It's time now for sharing of stories from friends. And uh, if there are friends here today who would like to come, to the front and share a personal story that you have related to uh, Brother Bailey. Feel free to come at this time. We we're asking that you try, try not to go over two minutes. Most people go over three, but that's all right. <laughs> come right up, come right up. Come over to the piano side and come, come around. While they're coming, I worked closely with Brother Bailey in, in the uh, program the last supper, and he worked with us for quite a while. He's a very good actor, a very good actor. But as Brother said, if it had to be done, he'd do it. And uh, he was always willing to do and to go wherever we went and to do whatever need to be, needed to be done. Very good man. Just turn. Uh, 
Larry and I go back so far. Deep is like a daughter. But uh, as soon as he joined the church, he joined the chancel choir at that time. Bass extraordinary. Very much missed. He knew every note of any song that he was singing or that we were singing. Then we moved on to that. My husband, Beth Bailey, and a group of us, but we were pathfinders. I was talking to the gentleman here. We're master guides and uh, dating ourselves <laughs> 30 years ago, whatever. There was a, a storm. We were on the campground. Larry and Charlene were the only two that stayed out in the storm. The rest of us went in and slept inside. They always were ready to meet whatever the things were. Then I have a young brother, and this is a lot of this before Diva came along. She, uh, this was before <laughs> uh, her mom and dad, but I have a younger brother that uh, is in the Marion Hospital. He's a, he's a veteran. And uh, if I couldn't go, mom said, Larry would drive. He would get in his, my car, drive all the way there and back, bring him there, take him back. He was always available to help anyone that needed any help. Then we go from that to when the Diva and our grandchildren, Darlene and Adrian, they were all together. Uh, Diane had the nursery, there was Larry. And it just goes on and on and on. We do appreciate Diva, what Dad has left. And you know we love you very much. We're here to support you. But you have um, an excellent background and stairs to climb up to and to step on. So God bless you and do what you have to. Cry do whatever you have to do. Amen. But when you finish it, wake up and serve God as your dad did. Amen. I was thinking, I had spoken to Diva when she came in, and I was thinking while I was listening to the beautiful selections given by the young lady and, and the young man uh, of things that I could share. Um, I will start off with 1978 was the years. Now, 78 was the year that I got married, and I believe that Diane and Larry got married that same, around that same time. Um, when Larry joined, uh, a few years earlier, when Larry joined the choir, uh, my ex-husband joined and um, Sister Turner was, uh, she was influential in getting him to come to play, which is how we met. He had come as an instrumentalist, he played the bass guitar. So he developed a friendship with your dad. And uh, I be believe between him and your dad, and Billy Jameson, I call them the Three Musketeers. They went everywhere together. They got bikes. I remember uh, at the time, Rick got a bike. They also spent money on cameras because at that time, Ricky was spending a couple hundred dollars on cameras. And they would get together, the three of them. They would meet up, whether it came by my house or came uh, by the church or wherever. And they would either go to Chicago and ride on the lake, I mean ride from Gary right. to Chicago and ride on the lake. They also went out to the dunes. And I remember thinking that was probably one of the best friends that Ricky had, because he in fact asked him, Larry, to be his best man. And we had a very small way. We just had the best man and made him And Larry was the best man for Rick. And I, I do remember when the uh, guy was talking about how he walked or he bike rode, he did. He was, he was definitely the model for exercise and being out in the open and taking pictures and all of that. And I remember that so vividly. 
Um, uh, and I also remember, as Sister Turner said, I think by me being a musician, I just remember all the times doing choir rehearsal when he had that part and be carrying the bass. And sometimes we didn't have but two or three bass. And trust me, when they were supposed to get down, they got down. But at any rate, uh, I'm going to say that Larry was a real person, you know? There was nothing funny about him. He, he was just down to earth. And um, I will uh, re always remember how he, and as uh, they mentioned, also your mother, they were part of a generation that even though when they're a little bit younger, that I feel like all of the older uh, people who are gone now, like, you know, in my mother's and father's generation, because we had, Pathfinders was strong. Yes. We grew up in Pathfinders. We had the baddest drill team. I know I was on it. <laughs> we had a great time growing up in this church. And even though I never, not one day, spent in church school, my mother did uh, devotions at home. And she kept us in Pathfinders, and she kept us in Federations, and we just did everything to have a foundation. And as the gentleman said, our children, our grandchildren today don't have what we had. So I'm going to take your commission and I'm going to try to, to do what I can because, trust me, those memories, those things that I grew up with, you couldn't trade those for a million dollars. You couldn't. Amen. I'll be praying for you. We're going to stay in touch. And it will get better because in the morning, if we are faithful, we will see all those that have gone on before and that are resting now. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to say first that Diva Do was a little bitty baby as I knew her. And I was teaching kindergarten here at Miss. And she would, in the morning, come in the room with the children and participate. But then at lunchtime, she'd go in the office, and there was a cot behind her mom, who was the secretary at the school, and she'd sleep there. And I don't know how we ended up calling her Diva Do, but we did. And I told her, that's how I remember you, even though you're a grown lady right now, with a little diva of your own. Um, what I remember most about Brother Bailey was the fact that he had a sense of humor. He had a smile you couldn't take away, even if he was angry, he had a smile on his face if something was bothering him. He was good for finding something in nature when we were camping on the campground and bringing it to show it to you, even though you might have been scared to pick it up. He would pick it up and bring it to you and say, did you know this and have you seen that? And when I was the Pathfinder director here, I was um, pregnant with my youngest, he was 31 now, and Brother Bailey, who was supposed to be the assistant Pathfinder director, was really the Pathfinder director. So when we went to Camp Marie that fall, he was basically in charge. He, he told us what to do, where to go, and I knew because I grew up as a pathfinder, but my child was home born in July and I'm in the woods in September. So he was the heart of that. And one memory that my husband and I have never forgotten was we were going home, this was a long time ago, and the pathfinders were having something in southern Indiana at a campground. And we were on the highway headed home, and he was on the highway with his thumb out. And I said, David, that's Brother Bailey. So we pulled over and said, Brother Bailey, what are you doing? He said, I missed my ride to the camp, and I got to get down there, so I'm going to get there the best way I can. And so we said, Brother Bailey, get in the car. We'll take you. Well, we didn't know how far it was. It was over two hours. So we had to stop and get some gas, and we gave him a ride down there. And I know he made it on back, but he was industrious. He was determined, and he was healthy because he walked everywhere he went, everywhere he went. So he, he's been missed since he hasn't been here at Miss World, truly missed, and we try to keep up with him, where he was and how he was doing over the years, and I know you're going to miss him dearly, but he left lots of memories to smile about, so keep those in your heart. 
God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. I do have many of stories, but this one came to my mind because it involves a church and a campground. Do you know a young man, he passed away, he used to be a member of this church. I think his name was Orion. Yes. Okay, Orion. 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 Right. You know what a youth provision is? Mm -hmm. The dirt road that goes that way? Yes. is named after him. Oh, amen. There is a sign there. Oh, Praise the Lord. Amen. If there aren't any more friends, or I should not are, is the family ready to, to come to the front and say anything? Okay. Family, you can take two and a half minutes. <laughs> And they would call me Little BC because I look just like you. You are a good dad, a fun dad, a funny dad. I can't remember one time ever being spanked or scolded by you. Not even when I was 16 and you had to come get me from our neighbor's New Year's Eve party because I was just a little intoxicated. Well, maybe a lot, and I threw up the next morning. You didn't get mad at me. You made jokes and hung signs all over the house called me a drunk. <laughs> Like I said, Dad, I just want to thank you and tell you I appreciate you for all that you've done for me and for giving me your sweet, humble spirit. I'll always love you. I'll always miss you. God's getting a good man in his army. And from my sister, Melody, my daddy was a loving and gentle and very smart man. It's funny reading the comments that some of his Pathfinder group made about him talking about camping and teaching them about nature. And I so vividly remember when I was a child, he did the same thing for my sister and I before most of you were even born. I always remember him teaching us about plants and berries. You could survive off if you needed to. My daddy loved tea. He would have natural tea remedy for whatever ailed you. He taught us how to count the seconds between the lightning strikes and the thunderclap, which would let you know how far in miles the storm was from you. His old Navy saying, red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. He said it meant that a storm was coming if the sky was red in the morning. Uh, I still say that to this day, and I think it's true because my daddy said so. <laughs> 
My daddy was always the same guy, easygoing, friendly, and kind. Our lives are better because of you. I love you. My father was my hero. I thought that he could never die. I literally thought my father was invincible. And that walk, everybody knows that walk. Like, he walked like he was about to go like meet the president or something. Like, he just walked with purpose. But my fondest memories of my father was, if you guys remember, my mother would always go to sickle cell camp, and sometimes that crossed over between camp meeting. So I would stay with my Auntie Bernice. Well, I could find Auntie Bernice. I was probably about five or six years old. And Daddy had to get on the bus to come back to Gary with the Pathfinders. And he was like, baby, I got to get on the bus, and there's somebody right here. And I was like, no, Daddy, you can't leave me. Like, you can't leave me, Daddy. And he was like, no, baby, I have to go. Well, he got on the bus and the bus took off and I was running behind the bus like, no, daddy, no, like you're leaving me. Well, about five minutes later, I'm sitting there on the campground next to the EFG cabins and the calf crying my little eyes out. And I see that walk coming down the middle of the campground, coming to get me and I have no idea how he got home. But he got off the bus and he walked back and he came to get me. My daddy never cared. He didn't care because he lived life. And apparently I'm very much his child because I live life. He was amazing. He was amazing and he wasn't always perfect. And he didn't do anything right. But he was my daddy. And I loved him. And my little girl. I might not take her camping because I will find somebody else to do that. <laughs> I feel like I paid my camping dues. Um, <laughs> my little girl walks just like him and is determined just like he is. And my mother sends her love. But I think this might have been just a little bit too hard for her to go back. So, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving my mother. Thank you for loving my father. This was the church I was dedicated in. This was the church they got married in. This was where we attended. This is where I got my first candy that my mother was very upset about. I was in somebody's classroom. But this is home. And so I had to bring it home. Tributes or comments, there will be a video tribute in following that in the closing prayer.
May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace in your hearts, peace in your homes until Jesus comes. Let everyone say, Amen. 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 Do we have any? Oh, there is a uh, um, reception uh, following the service. We invite you to stay by and share your condolences and, and love. And God bless you today. You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. And you can't find a fighter. But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out Move mountains We gon' walk it out and move mountains And I rise up, I rise like the day I rise up, I rise unafraid I rise up, and I Silence is quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we would take the world to its feet Move my dance Bring it to its feet That we have each other Thousand times again, and we'll rise.